What's up guys, welcome back. In this video, I wanna walk you through a new tool that I have come across, which I think has given Perplexity a run for its money. I've been getting a lot better responses out of it. I wanna show you a use case that I'm using it for, and then poke around and show you the type of answers that we can get out of this thing and what the different options are. So the tool is called Exa. If you haven't heard of it, it is an AI first intelligent search engine, I guess is the best way to put it. If you go to their website, exa, so that's E-X-A-I or E-X-A dot A-I, you can go and you can check out the site. It's positioned as the search engine for AI, business grade search and crawling for any web data. Now there's a few different pieces of this tool that are really pretty cool. So the first one is going to be just the pure API. This web sets piece is I believe in beta, so it's not accessible yet. You could join the wait list. But what I've been messing around with is the API itself. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through and show you exactly how it works so that you can try it out for yourself. Now, the pricing on it is also pretty cheap. I've been playing around with it a lot and I think I've spent less than a dollar on it. So if you come down and look at the pricing on this tool, they have a few different or two, really two different ways of uh, charging you when it comes to the primary search. So they have two different ways that you can search, which is where this is, is based, based from. So they have this, what they call neural search. And what this is, is it's a semantic search that uses actual uh, embeddings. So that's obviously different from something that's just like, say, a pure SERP search where it's going to do some keyword matching and then return you results based on the keywords. With a semantic search that's using embeddings, it's actually finding resources that are super relevant to what you're asking for specifically. And I'll give you a really good example of this. I was looking for a tool that would help me automatically create API documentation that I could integrate into Cursor. And a lot of my Google search results actually weren't giving me a very relevant uh, result for that, which is like medium articles and other things like that. When I use it in this tool, it returned to me a GitHub repo that had like one star on it that clearly no one has ever even really seen. I think I had one fork maybe, and it was exactly what I was looking for. And so it's ability to actually return you results that you really want that may not necessarily be from the highest domain rating or most authoritative site is honestly really, really good. And I think that's one of the reasons that I'm starting to use it a lot. So again, it has this search functionality. It charges you per 1000 requests. And again, it has two different options. So you have the neural option, you have the keyword option. The keyword option is obviously cheaper. So $2 and 50 cents versus uh, $5 for the, for the neural search. Now, if we come down here to the contents API, this is like a web scraper. So this, again, search is returning you just the search results. And I'll show you examples of this just in a second. Uh, contents, the contents API endpoint is actually returning you like fully scraped, summarized web pages. So that being said, let's just actually hop in here and, and look at look at this thing. So uh, this is actually the example that I was talking about uh, a second ago. So let me actually pause real quick and pull up the, I'm going to search this exact same thing inside of Google and show you the uh, what the difference is. All right, so let's actually check this out right now. So we just searched this and we can come down here and we can see it's pulling really like a lot of GitHub repositories, which is interesting. So it, it's clearly understanding, I think semantically, what exactly it is that I am looking for. Now, there are other options in here that I'll get to in a second, but I just wanna show you the Google search results. Not really showing me the type of stuff that I was looking for. And then same thing if I go inside of perplexity. Um, so I will say this is uh, technically the probably one of the better ways to do it. So perplexity did have a pretty good answer on this one, um, but they didn't look at GitHub really at all for any of their responses, which is interesting because there were several GitHub first type of responses that came out of it. Now I wanna get in and show you what some of the the features of this thing are. And then I'm going to show you a use case where I'm actually using this tool. So again, when you send this through, 
your search type. And again, this can be used or should be used as an API specifically. Okay, this is meant to be used as an API. So it gives you the, the different options over here. It can give you the, the Python code, JavaScript code, or even just a curl request. But now if we come through here, again, we have two different search types we can choose from. Auto, it picks. So based on the search query, it's gonna decide if it runs it as neural or keyword, or you can just you know, pick which one you wanna do. Something that I think is really cool is this category option. So you can tell it what type of re response you're really looking for. So uh, for example, if I was to come in here and actually say GitHub, it's gonna obviously pull me GitHub repos. Whereas if I was to say, I want tweets specifically, and I ran this thing, now it's gonna go out and it's gonna find me tweets that are talking about this type of uh, content. Uh, oh, Greg Eisenberg down there, nice. So you give me tweets, LinkedIn results, news articles, research papers. You kind of get the point. If we were to come through here and do another search, such as how is DeepSeek impacting the open source AI ecosystem, for example, and we ran this and we said, hey, we want to look at tweets specifically. It's going to give you little previews of the tweets that are coming through about that. So pretty cool. You can limit it by number of results, specific date ranges, domain inclusion or exclusion filters. But when we scroll down here, this is one of the things that I think is, is really cool, especially when we're thinking through the context of using this as an API specifically. It can funnel you some pretty helpful things. Uh, so the first one is going to be, one, you can tell it like, hey, I want a live crawl of this, this page. So I don't want your cached result. I want to see what the live result of this is. Full page text. So this is going to do exactly what it says. It is going to pull for you a, a scrape of the actual website at, in, as a whole. So it's going to go and pull all the content off the site. You can tell it if you want it to like retain the HTML structure of the pages or if you want it scrubbed out. And then you can put a character limit on it, which is helpful if you're going to be feeding this thing to like a, a large language model and you don't want to hit context limits and things like that. It can be really helpful. AI page summary. This is pretty awesome too. So you can come through here and give a custom prompt. So if I was to say, um, give the summary as something a 90 year old grandma would understand. And I was to tell it to now go out and pull a research paper. It is going to go out there and it's going to actually run the response against that query that you gave it, that prompt that you gave it. So if we were to come down here now and look at the, look at this summary that it has right here. Let's see if I can pop this open a little bit. It's now like using that query, that prompt query we gave it as part of its response. So it says DeepSeek is kind of like a computer program that can solve problems like a smart kid. It's free to use, unlike some other programs that cost a lot of money. It's especially good at math and computer coding, blah, 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 right? So that that is also really, really, really awesome, depending on the use case that you're going to have for this, which again, I'm going to get into in just a second. And then last but not least, you can pull in uh, sub pages. So if it's referencing like other pages on the domain and things like that, it can kind of go a little bit recursively, I suppose. And then uh, links. So if you wanted to pull like, hey, pull me the top 10 links that are also associated with this page or say five links, for example, and I were to run this, it's now going to go out and it's going to pull me any internal links or external links that were present on this page as well. And so this is really, really, really cool. Other options that EXA has, they have this contents. So if you wanted to like just do a scrape, so say you already have the URLs and you want to scrape them and get you know any of the stuff we were just looking at, they do have an endpoint specifically for that. So you can just give it an array of URLs and it will go out and scrape all of them. And then they do have these other, other endpoints as well where you can find similar web pages or just get a straight answer to something. And this is gonna be more like what perplexity is. So I love this API. I'm not, I don't wanna sugarcoat it. I'm not, I don't have like any sort of relationship with them. I don't even know if they have an affiliate program or what it is, 
Um, I just came across this and I, I think it's awesome. I think it's, it's like fucking dope, especially compared with something like perplexity, which the API in perplexity just is, I don't know, kind of feels a little dull to me. And this seems to be made for developers as opposed to being made for a consumer that, oh, it happens to have an API on the back end. It's like, this is developer first. It's what it feels like at least. And um, like I said, I've been power using this thing, uh, trying to run different things through it. And I've used a dollar. So it had it gave me $20 first of all, which was awesome. I've used like a dollar 30 on it. Um, so pretty, pretty cool stuff. I'm gonna kill this API key because I was showing it earlier on accident. So that being said, let's think of like a use case where I actually use this. So if you want to see this, by the way, I do have a separate video that I haven't published where I show how this newsletter creation workflow works. But I just want to explain to you this exa.ai in the context of an automation that you might use. And so this was built for a client that wanted to be able to programmatically create newsletters with a human in the loop of that newsletter creation. One of the big problems, personally, if you're gonna ask me about my personal philosophy, is that a lot of people are using AI to just mass produce kind of garbage content. And I think AI should be used to augment what humans can do. And so this is a cool newsletter system because it has several stages where it actually prompts human beings for their opinion on the topics. So it's not just gonna go out and write some newsletter uh, for shits and giggles and then just publish it. It's gonna actually pause and ask the user like, hey, what do you think about the impact of, of DeepSeek on the, open, on the open source ecosystem for AI? What do you think about that, right? And then if the user thinks like, hey, well, it's kind of coming out that they might've just stolen a lot of their training data from open AI, it's like, okay, interesting perspective. You could prompt that and then that's going to make its way into the end product. So it's more of augmenting what humans can do as opposed to replacing. Little side note there, but a little bit of personal philosophy. But what this thing does is when a, and this isn't the production version, by the way, when a message comes in, which is like a topic for a newsletter, it goes out and it hits that EXA API and it gives it the user's message. And so what it does is it then returns a giant batch of all of those responses, right? So when we searched, for example, what is the impact that it's having on the open source ecosystem and say we had it filtered for tweets, it's going to go out there and it's going to pull like the top 10, top 15 tweets related to that topic. And then it can move it through a process where it goes through, it actually scrapes those pages, it gets the full context, and then it feeds that into an open AI model that can take it and parse it into a loose outline of an article. And then from there, it pumps it into Airtable where we can have a human look at the output and say, this is what I think about that topic. Then after the user says, hey, I'm good to go on this thing, it's gonna go back out and it's gonna run through and actually construct an article for that topic specifically. And so I use this right now with other tools such as Perplexity because I notice it, it gives different results. And so if you want a full breadth of types of citations or responses. It could be helpful to use both tools. So you can see in this one, for example, I gather citations in perplexity and then I pass it to this EXA API to scrape the contents of that page and give a AI summary of the page. And then based on that, the model determines what is actually the most relevant for the topic of this newsletter. And the cycle continues until we have a fully fleshed out newsletter. Uh, so pretty cool. Again, the tool is exa.ai. If you're doing any sort of like knowledge-based development where you need a good API that is AI first and gives you just like data in a way that perplexity really hasn't or doesn't always, this is a tool that I highly recommend you check out. And again, like I said, if you do want to see this full video, uh, please let me know. I have a lot of stuff like this that I haven't necessarily recorded videos on. I'd be happy to publish and share with you guys. So that is it for this video. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.